Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and we've got a couple of things going on in today's video. So we're going to continue on our stump work or raised embroidery journey. And if you didn't see our first video all about stump work and what stump work is and lots of samples of it, you can check that out up here. It's proving really popular actually. So I think this is a subject that um, we're going to cover a little bit more of because you seem to be really interested in that. So do make sure you check that one out as well. So in that video, we did a giveaway of a book by Barbara and Roy Hurst called Raised Embroidery. I happen to have two of these, so I thought I don't need to, I'll give one away. So we will do the draw for that one shortly. And I just want to show you a couple more pieces that came in. So I put a call out for our channel members and our patrons to send me pictures of their stump work. Some of them didn't make the cut last time, so I want to show you those now. So I've got a couple that I want to show you um, now. And the first one is by Lois. Hi, Lois. <laughs> I taught Lois years and years ago in Portland in the USA and she did beautiful creative things. They were really, really wonderful. And I know um, Lois is watching and um, has been doing a lot more stitching since then. And she did this wonderful piece here. So this is a dragon in gold work and stump work. And this was an online class with Alison Cole. So you can check her out. You can I'll put a link actually um, but to her below in the description below this video if you're interested in Alison Cole and she did this amazing online class and the wings are all stump work and they're the technique that we're going to look at today actually so this is one of the things that you can do with this technique so it's really quite amazing so thank you Lois for sharing that with us and um, that's really awesome. And the next project I want to share you is by Tim. Thank you, Tim, for sending these. And now Tim sent me loads of pieces of his stump work. And I think, Tim, you're a bit of an expert, actually. <laughs> you can probably teach me a thing or two. But what I was really interested in in the pieces that you sent is this piece here. And this is a project called Forest Floor. It is by Kay Dennis. Now, I mentioned Kay Dennis in the last video. Look out for her stump work books. They're really, really lovely books to learn from. Um, and this was actually in Inspirations magazine, issue 104, if you're interested in doing this one wonderful project. But what I wanted to show you here was um, Tim sent me some pictures of how he worked this project um, and some breakdown of it. And I thought this was really interesting. So we've seen the finished one and I just want to focus in on the little berries that he has done because he's um, sent me a picture of them all in the frame. And this is what you have to do with stunt work. You have to work all the little bits separately and then you assemble them afterwards. Um, and it's tempting to cut one berry out and get it made up and stick it on. But then you've got a big hole in your fabric and you can't use it. So you've got to be really patient and do all the elements first. So you can see all the berries on the hoop here. Um, and he's made the little leaves of the pope, um, woven pico leaves that we talked about in the previous video as well. And he's used the beads to do the berries. And I presume there's quite a little bit of padding under those as well. And you can see the wires sticking out because then what he's done is cut those berries out and twisted the wires together and covered the wires in a thread and made a little bunch of blackberries, I presume they're blackberries. And then those have been attached onto the forest floor. So I thought that was really interesting to see the process that you go through to make this finished piece and that you make all these little elements first and they come together at the end to make a wonderful piece of stump work. So thank you very much for sharing that with us, um, Tim. Um, it's really, really beautiful. So I want to introduce you to the first thing that we are going to do in the stump work series. We're going to make something, but just before we do that, we are going to do the draw for the book that I have just shown you. So let's do that now and see who is the winner. So well done, Farron. You are the winner of our Raised Embroidery book by Barbara and Roy Hurst. So I will leave an answer to the comment that you left in the video, letting you know how you can get in touch with us, or you can go to the contact page on my website and get in touch with me through there if you like, and we'll arrange how to get your prize on its way to you. So I'm going to show you a project in raised embroidery or stump work, whichever you would like to call it. And I thought I would start with the dragonflies. So that is these here. I showed you these in that first video that we did. And the reason I'm going to start with these ones is because this winged area here, these wired shapes are really popular in stump work and they come into lots of different projects. You will see from the previous video that we made leaves out of them and butterflies and flowers. So they're really versatile. Um, so I thought this was a good one to start with. A Few of you have asked for other things as well. You've asked for slips and you've asked for needle lace. Quite a few have asked for needle lace. So we will have a look at those later, but this is a really good place to start. So I just thought I would show you these two again and what we are going to do. 
So they're made in exactly the same way, they're just a different colour scheme and slightly different fabrics. So we're just going to make this raised body very, very simple. This you'll be surprised when you see how it's done, how easy this is. And then we are actually going to make these wings. So this is obviously a stump work technique here and we're going to make four of them and make them separately and we're going to wire them and then attach them so those ones have been done in that really nice sparkly fabric and these ones I've done in gold that was just, <laughs> that was ginger cat jumping off the cupboard if that was a noise sorry about that so these ones I've made in gold and I've done a little bit of stitching on them as well so I'm going to show you how to make these and I thought what I would do um, today is we would talk about backgrounds because I can show you how to do some backgrounds from very simple up to quite complicated complex ones and then I'll go through the materials that you need to make the dragonfly and then if you want to next week when I do the dragonfly you can either stitch along with me or you can have all your materials ready to stitch one over the weekend so let's talk about some backgrounds so I really like working a background before I do my embroidery. You can just do the embroidery on a plain piece of fabric if you want, it's absolutely fine. But I quite like to put it in a bit of context. So if we just start with this one. So this is just a plain background. I did actually just paint this my, myself. So it's got a bit of variation in it. So if you don't have the colour fabric that you want, you can just have a plain piece of cotton and you can have some either some watercolour paint or some... Uh, fabric paint I'll talk about those in a minute and you could just color in your background so you can have any color that you want really um, if you don't happen to have one in your stash you can paint it yourself so um, it looks quite nice on a plain background it's all about the dragonfly in that one um, and if you just want to practice as well um, yes do it on a plain bit of fabric while well, you've got the hang of it because you might want to make a few of these so this one here is obviously on a pattern fabric now this is pre-printed um, quilt and cotton that's all it is and I just thought the colours were really nice on that and I've actually picked out some of the details of the print in here I put some stitching in along the leaves there's some beads in you can see them sparkle in the centre of the flowers and some gold stitches in there as well and that just ties the dragonfly into the background so he doesn't just look like he's stuck on top of something he's actually um, he actually matches it if you like so bring some of the blue and the gold into this and he looks like he's part of a whole scheme and it just adds another dimension to your piece of work so if you've got some nice pretty quilting cottons go and have a dig around and see what you can find and see if there's something nice to put a dragonfly on so you could take your fabric background a little bit further and you could apply some fabrics to it. So you could do some applique. Now we do have a whole video all about applique if you're interested to know what that is and how to do some of these techniques. Um, but you could just apply some fabrics to the background and make an interesting design with them. So just got a bit of organza. This is going to come in later for the wings. But um, this is quite nice because you could put it over the the background fabric so you could have a pattern and a fabric on top if you like just build up some layers to it so that could be a really nice background to put him on and I did also find some of this lace in my collection floating around and you could just apply a piece of lace to the background just put him on top of the lace just to add a little bit of interest I cut a little bit out there so you could make the lace a feature and if you framed it like that with the lace and the dragonfly, that would look really beautiful. Um, I took that one step further as well and I coloured my lace in. So I coloured it in blue, I was thinking of like a watery or sky kind of a background. He might be flying, so the background um, might be blue. So all I did with this, and I'm surprised this took the paint actually, is this lace. It's a synthetic lace. And I sprayed it with water and I just dropped some watercolour paint into it and it spreads in the water and if you just leave it it'll just keep spreading and it goes a really subtle colour the watercolour will dry lighter than it appears initially as well and then when this was dry because you can see where it's just faded out where it's gone into that water I just got some gold paint and I just did some little details on the lace of the gold just to add a little bit of um, background detail again you could bring the gold into the dragonfly and that's how you tie the whole thing in together and you can always cut that to size if you wanted to as well. So I thought the lace was a really interesting idea to put him on. So then I went one stage even further and I thought I got the paints out. I'm going to paint the background now. If you've watched my videos before you may have seen some other ones with painted backgrounds. I do love doing a painted background and this is what I did. 
Now, don't panic if you see that and think, oh, I can't do that. That's not an option for me. Um, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit um, how I did that. I'm going to show you some of the process involved and you'll see it's not as scary as it first seems. Um, so I have got just a cotton backing. This is our bio washed cotton, cotton fabric here. And I've wet it and I've used some watercolour paints to paint this background on, gone over it with some pencils and then I've actually done some ribbon embroidery on it as well. So you can paint your background and then you could stitch onto the painted background and then you could stitch your embroidery on top of that. So there's lots of layers to this and I suggest you jump in at the layer you know that you can easily do. Um, this project's about the dragonfly and learning those techniques so um, you may want to practice that first and then think about your background later or if you've got some artistic skill and you like painting um, then you might want to jump in and do background for your dragonfly. So what I will do with this is I will do an outline drawing of this and I will put it on the free stuff page on our website and I'll do an outline drawing and I'll do a photograph of this one as well. So if you've got lots of technology and you've got an inkjet printer um, and maybe some special paper and you can print this straight onto fabric. So if you want this design and you've got those facilities, you could actually do that and, and embroider onto that printed one. Or if you want to have a go yourself, you could download the outline one and you can draw it on to your fabric and you can have a go at colouring in. And I'm going to show you a few of those techniques now. So I'm not going to explain how I did the whole of the bulrushes background. Um, if you are interested to see that, then let me know and maybe we could do a video on that. We could cover that one. Um, but I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques that I used in it. So what I have done is I've just copied the outline design that I'm going to put on the free stuff page for you. And I haven't put every leaf in, so if I just show you Oops, rid of the lace. I'll just show you this one. I've got lots more leaves in this than I have on this, but I just want to show you the basics of how you can start to do this design. So I've got um this is on my my cotton. Now what I have done here is I've just got one layer of cotton. I haven't put the backing cotton on it. Paint it first, let it dry, then put the backing fabric when you come to stitch on it. Um, otherwise paint can bleed through and, and it does weird things. So just paint on one layer and then put backing on afterwards. Now you'll need some paint that goes onto fabric. So don't use acrylic because that goes plastic. So I've got a couple of paints here. I've got some Dylon fabric paint here and I've got some watercolour paint as well. Um, silk paint works really nicely too, that bleeds really nicely. So if you want to do a background that's not um, definite, you know, it's a bit of a sort of smoky background, a bit of atmospheric background, those are really good for that. So I'm just going to demonstrate on a couple here. I've got myself a spray bottle with some water and all I've done for the background of this is I have sprayed this so it's wet and let the paint soak in. So I'm just going to show you a little bit on the background here. So you might have to put quite a bit on actually for it to get really wet. Where the wet meets the dry, the paint will stop and you'll get a line. So you really want it um, wet all the way to the edge. And then the first thing I'm just going to show you is the fabric paint. Now I've got my water brush here just because it's convenient in the studio, but just a brush and a pot of water is fine. And then I've just watered it down. So I've got my blue is really, really strong. Now, if you use fabric paint, paint the colour is really, really strong. It'll come out nice and vibrant. Um, so I've just watered it down quite a bit and just use a little bit of the blue with the white. If you're mixing colours, put the lighter colour in first. And then if I just drop that on, you can make it darker if you want to. Just make it different. If you just paint it flat colour all the way through, it looks a bit a bit dull, you could do a little bit darker blue nearer the bottom. And you can see it's soaking into the fabric. So this is the fabric paint, so it's a bit thicker. Scrub it in a bit. And I think don't fiddle too much, just let it dry and it will soak in and do its own thing. So that's fabric paint and that's literally all there is to it. You see there's no refined painting to that. I've just made it really wet and just let the paint soak in and just add a little bit of colour in here just to make that a little bit different. So let's just have a look at the watercolour paint doing that. So I've got an artist watercolour paint but you don't need an artist quality, especially for this we're going to use it very thin, it's going to bleed in, we're not doing works of art um, 
not not painted works of art, we're doing works of art in embroidery instead, but you don't have to be an artist one, it's just more pigment in an artist one, so that's um, a rowney one, uh, cobalt blue, so quite a nice light colour blue there, and again I'm just going to wet that, so with watercolour paint you don't need very much, don't squeeze half a tube out, the clue is in the name, watercolour, bit of colour, lots of water, and that's really really runny, and if I just drop that in you can see how that spreads really easily into the water so make sure the back is wet because otherwise you'll get lines in it and then if you want watercolour paler you just add more water to it you don't put white in it normally in some circumstances you do but so you just add more water and this will bleed you think oh that's really strong um, I don't want it any stronger so but it will dry lighter if you like it how it is and you want it to dry quickly get the hair dryer out give it a good quick blast on that and it will dry and it should stay where it is if you leave it that paint will continue to seep into the water and it will um, become paler and paler and a more subtle background which might be what you want that's what I've got on mine um, so you can choose so I suggest as usual having a little sample try first don't go in on your main one first and you can just see how dark you want to get it you can put some if I just put the pure paint in you can see how much darker that is so you could make quite a moody sky with that if you wanted to you could do green at the bottom if you wanted it to come out of the green so that's a couple of ways you can do a simple background just to change the colour of the background so if you've got a nice white fabric and it's a bit stark white um, that is an easy way that you can just colour the background and the other thing that I wanted to show you is what to do if you want some more detail. So the actual bulrushes themselves and the leaves are obviously quite refined. They're not bleeding into the fabric. Um, and what I used for this was some pencils. And I find that most coloured pencils will work on this. These ones are actually watercolour ones, but they don't need to be watercolour ones. So do make sure your fabric is dry first. So let your background dry completely. And then you can literally colour these in. So... Let's do a ball wash over here where it's dry so you can see how easily that works on the cotton. Now I've got it in the frame so it's a bit bouncy. Um, if you take it out of the frame your fabric moves a lot so either take the fabric out and tape it down so it doesn't move or put something underneath the frame so you've got a solid surface to work on but I'm just going to go with this. And If you want to get technical you can get a darker colour, colour in the bottom but a little bit darker shade it around the side and make it look a little bit more round so depending on what sort of experience you've got of this you can choose if you haven't got any you can just colour it in like so and remember this is the background so the feature will be the dragonfly but the background will just set the dragonfly off so don't worry if the background isn't perfect be looking at the dragonfly more than be looking at the background and then if you want to do some stems on it you can just go over those lines. If you have a nice sharp pencil, you can make those stems come down like so. And then if you've got a green one, you could put some leaves in. So it's going to go into my blue, but it's okay. And you can see, because this is a watercolour pencil, when it hits the water, it actually becomes really vibrant. I'm not worried about that little bleed there, adds to the atmosphere of the piece and then if you want to just thicken some leaves up a little bit you can do that as well, that's one twisting over there. So grab yourself a little bit of cotton, a bit of calico is good and have a play and see what works for you. So I suggest something more fine like pencils if you want detail and the fabric paint, silk paint or watercolour for a more atmospheric background and then I just worked on that, I just built that up so I did my background first, let's put that next to it so you can see you did the background first, you know, this is bled out of here but I don't mind that at all, it's the impression of lots of leaves and lots of bulrushes there and I think that's quite nice and then I just kept working these leaves on top and I put extra leaves into the ones that are on the design and then I even, I don't know if you can see the gold, I got a little bit of gold paint and I just put a little bit on the tops of the bulrushes like the light, the sunlight hitting the bulrushes um, <clears throat> and then I just let that dry 
and then what I did is I took that fabric off the frame because remember we're just working on one piece and then I added my backing fabric onto it once it was dry so that is quite important that you do that so two layers together and it's back on the frame and then there is one more stage if you want to take this one step further so I was initially just going to leave it with the painted background. I thought that looks quite nice. But again, it's that thing of the embroidery just looks like it's stuck onto a background and how do you tie those two things together? So I thought if I did a little bit of embroidery on the background as well, that would be the thing that unites all the different elements of this piece. So I've actually done some stitching on this and you could take this much further than I have taken it. So if you wanted to, instead of colouring these in in pencil, you could stitch them, a little stem stitch down here be nice you could do some French knots in the bulrushes you could embroider all that first if you wanted to but I just wanted to try it with some silk ribbon so these leaves here are done in silk ribbon and they're done in ribbon stitch in two colours so I've got a lighter brighter green and a slightly sort of darker one here and I've just done three stitches in each it's only got six stitches in it and we do have lots of videos on silk ribbon embroidery if you're interested in that and you want to learn how to do this it's very very easy to do really beautiful material to work with as well so I've just added these uh, layer of leaves on the top of this with these silk ribbons and I've just couched that on it's got a little stitch across there so I could fold the top over a lot of the leaves of the bulrushes they're so long that they just bend over on themselves so I've just done that there and here and down here and then these ones I've just done straight, um, um, just straight ones to blend in with the ones that I've done in the background. So again, you could take that as far as you like. You could do more stitching on that if you want. But I just thought it's a little bit of painting, it's a little bit of stitching. And then the dragonfly is going to sit in this sort of blue area here. His wings are going to overlap the bulrushes. So that ties it in and makes a really beautiful composition. Okay, so we've had a quick talk about background. So if you'd like to have a go at this next week and you want to have a go at your background first, you've got some ideas there to have a go with. If you're not sure and that all fills you with fear, just pick a nice piece of fabric and work him on a nice piece of fabric, that's fine. So I just want to show you now the materials that you will need to work the actual dragonfly. So I haven't quite decided what colour scheme I'm going to do yet, but that's okay, that doesn't matter. So we need something for the body and we need something for the wings. So let's just talk about wing fabric. Now, obviously dragonflies have got these beautiful lines Light, light wings you don't want to do them in a really really heavy fabric so if you've got something nice and light to work with that is great so we've got some organza here so this is just like synthetic but this is just like a, a very finely woven see-through fabric if you like this one's really nice it happens to change color I don't know where I got that one from, but if I fold it up, you can see the colours. So really nice wing-like colours there. You don't have to do it realistic colour. You can do them pinks and purples and whatever colour you like to do. Do a fantasy dragonfly if you like. So I've got some organza. There's another piece here. This is um, this is a shot one, so it's woven one colour one way and one the other. So when you turn it, it looks different. So it's blue one way, it's green the other. I don't know if the camera will catch that. So that might be nice, give his wings a little bit of a shimmer. I've got some slightly different fabric now, nice patterned fabric here. This one's been in the family for a long time. I think I got this off Caroline. And I've done a few projects with it as well. It's really beautiful fabric and it's got a nice pattern on it, but it's still got that see-through sort of light um, light feel about it. So like a wing-like type feel. So you could do a nice pattern one if you want to with a bit of fabric, got a bit of gold kind of lame stuff. Um, just have a check at the edges and what happens at the edges. All of these fabrics are a little bit tricky to use, especially if you've not done it before. So if it frays a lot, you might want to just save that until you've had a little bit of experience with it. Um, so maybe something that doesn't fray so much. So you could just use a fabric fabric if you want to. This is a nice thin silk fabric. Again, this is shot with the two colours here. So it's got a nice shine on it a nice sheen on it but it's a little bit more solid and we a little bit easier to work because what we're going to do with it is we're going to use some wire so that's the next thing you'll need this is cake wire cake decorating wire and we've got lots of different kinds in the shop you can choose your colors so when i did this on my apprenticeship we used paper covered wire and we used green or white which is this one here and what's nice about the paper covered wire is it's got a little bit more grip to it doesn't slip so much but if you're doing something in a nice blue fabric 
you might want a nice blue or a green wire to go with it. If you're not super confident your stitches are going to cover the wire, then a coloured one might be a good way to go. So I've got a nice blue one here, got the paper covered green one, and I've got a gold one as well. So you could make the wire part of the feature of it if you like, and that colour might show through. We've got some packets of it here, it comes like this. So you'll need some wire, we need to stitch over the wire, so you'll need some thread. Now I've got a few threads here that I'm going to use, I think. So I'm going to use this for the body. Now you will need um, some, um, some embroidery thread to work the body with. Oh, my guns are everywhere. So this is all stranded cotton here. So you can just use one colour if you want to, or you can mix them together and we can have different colours going down here. Again, to, to practice with, maybe just stick to one for simplicity sakes, but you can mix them if you want to. It might look quite nice with a stripe of colour. And in fact, I have done that on this one. He's got a couple of different colours in him there. So you can mix your colours if you want. I'm probably going to use that colour for the body. You'll need to stitch over that with something. I thought some metallic might be nice to add a little bit of contrast to that one there. I haven't decided which yet, so I've got to pull, uh, pulled a few different colours out from there. So um, we'll have a look at those and see if we think they're going to show up nicely and how easy they're going to stitch with. If metallic thread strikes fear into you, we have a video about how to handle it. Take control of your metallic thread, show it who's boss. Um, there are some ways that you can use it that will make it easier to use. So if you want to brave metallic threads, do check that video out. If you're not confident with those, just stick to another coloured stranded cotton and that will be fine. Okay, so I've got the colours for my body of the dragonfly and then we'll need something for the wings. So you can either match your fabric. So if I was going to use that blue one, I could get a matching blue thread to sew that down with. That one will go quite nicely actually because we're going to put the wire on that and we're going to stitch over the wire. So you could match it or if you want to contrast it, a nice gold edge would look really pretty, blue wings with a gold wire. So have a little route round and see what you have got. So you'll need fabric for the wings, you will need a colour stranded cotton, cotton for the body. I suggest stranded cotton because we're going to make it narrow, we're going to cut it away. So that's quite a good thread to use for that. And then one other thing that you will need something for his eyes. And we've got some beads here. So something fairly big tends to work quite well. If you don't have any fancy beads, you can, um, you could paint a bead. If you've got some plain wooden ones, you could paint those. You could make some out of wire. You can just scrunch the wire up very, very small and make little round eyes for that. Or you could even just use some felt and sew some felt down. So if you haven't got any fancy ones, don't worry. I've got quite a good bead selection. <laughs> So I've just picked some out of there. So I've got some little blue ones that might look nice. I've got some gold and I've got some green ones as well. So just again, stick into that colour scheme. I think don't have too many different colours going on. So just something for the eyes as well. Um, and then the other thing, quick equipment wise, you'll need um, an embroidery hoop. As small as you can is best for this and make sure that your fabric fits in your hoop, you've got enough fabric to fit in the hoop. Um, we're going to make the wings on here, we're going to do all of them on there, four wings for this, so make sure you can fit the four wings on. The wing size will be on the download on the free stuff page, so you can check out, I'll give you some different sizes, so check out that and see which wing size you'd like to use and make sure that they fit in your hoop, your fabric fits in its hoop. So you'll also need some needles to fit your cotton, so something fine, an embroidery 9 or a 10 I suggest, and some scissors as well. But what I will do is I will list all of the materials that I have used in the Dragonfly. I'll put it on the download so there'll be the outline drawing for the ball rushes. I'll do a picture of my finished painting of the ball rushes. I'll do the outline design for the wings of the Dragonfly and I will list all the equipment you need as well. So you've got everything you need in preparation if you want to stitch along with me. So I hope you're inspired to come and stitch a dragonfly with me and have a little go at stump work. Do check out this playlist up here. This is all about ribbon work embroidery. If you wanted to add some ribbon onto your background, that's a good one there. And I will see you next time and we will stitch some dragonflies.